Uh, so the first question is, what drew you to the project? Was it the script, the director, or both? What drew me to the project was um, David O. Russell, to be honest. I think he's a fantastic filmmaker. And, uh, and um, basically, I said yes, just based on it being him. Then I read the script, and uh, I actually didn't read the script at first. I talked to him for two years. And then I read the script. And uh, the subject matter of, um, you know, there was you know, how fragile democracy is. And there was a time when we could have lost our democracy um, before World War II. And, um, and how poignant that is to the challenges by authoritarians and ethno-nationalists and uh, fascists, frankly, neo-fascists, that's happening right now is so incredibly timely. Uh, but more than anything, I love the method of how he likes to work, which is constant exploration and constant uh, definition. You know, he's very much is uh, in general is the enemy of art and God is in the details. And it just got more and more detailed as it went along. And uh, also the tremendous respect to the actors that David has. He realizes that movies are, people go to see movies to see people and, um, Shots are important. That's all part of drawing you into the dream. But ultimately, you want to see people go through a journey. And uh, uh, this has been one of the most amazing experiences of my working life. And if David O. Russell wants me to do anything, the answer will be yes. Just tell me when and what to wear. <laughs> and Michael? Oh, yeah. Well, uh... Yeah, I remember. So every once in a while, you go see a movie, and you think, and, and you think afterwards, "Oh, I didn't know uh, movies could do that, or be like that, or, or were capable of uh, doing that." And um, I felt that way after I saw *Flirting with Disaster*. I remember seeing that movie and being like, "Whoever made this movie is really, really smart." And then I went and saw *I Heart Huckabees*, and the same thing. So ever since then, uh, it's been a, a, a dream of mine to work with David, and, and, and so it came to pass on this project, yes. All right, and the next question is, talk about the development of your characters. How involved was David in that process? So uh, David is very generous, and... Uh, he has very clear ideas of what he wants for your character, but he also wants to know what invisible ink you can bring to the process. Um, and he was very obsessed that uh, our Michael Shannon and my character be into bird watching and that it uh, be a key part of it. Um, and uh, very quickly, we started to talk about the nature of fascism and uh, fascism are the cuckoo birds. They steal other people's nests. You know, fascism isn't a economic system, nor necessarily um, a system of governance. It's, it's mafioso. It's, uh, it takes over other people's nests like the cuckoo. And so once that one big metaphor happened, bird metaphor, we just went crazy with it. Not everything ended up in the script, but that was, that was the way in. And I wanted to play a um, British civil service person because I've always been obsessed with the permanence and the efficiency of the British civil service. And uh, then we also talked about different movie archetypes of, of those characters, those catalyst characters, the threshold guardians that, that make and allow the the main characters to go through their journey. And uh, so that's, I love working in archetypes and I love that sort of stuff. So it was mana and I got to give my two cents and we just, it was about agree and add uh, between David and I. It was an unbelievably great experience. And Michael? Well, yeah, the, David really uh, gives you a lot of uh, information going into it. 
he was sending me books, uh, and I did a lot of reading. I had a lot of catching up to do because uh, he's he's just so well informed and knowledgeable about uh, about uh, this this period and this story. And uh, yeah, so I just basically just did a lot of reading, getting ready for it. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, can you talk about the amazing contributions of the team behind the camera? Oh, Chivo. Yeah. Well, I mean, Chivo's like the best DP, one of the top five in the world, I mean, right now. Um, and so fast and so uh, for a cinematographer, very uh, considerate and, and uh, giving and with the actors. Very uh, pro performance, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Uh, Chivo, on the other hand, understands that like all of us, we're in service to a broader dream uh, of which the performance is one part of it. So mm -hmm. he's very conscientious to move quickly because sluggishness for actors, especially if you're cooking, is is the death of it. And also at feedback, you know, he'd go, I really love what you did in that scene. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, you noticed, that's nice, you know what I mean? And the design across the board, uh, the production design, uh, costume design, uh, just so rich. Um, you know, it's hard when you're making a period piece to really get lost in that uh, era, whatever it is, and forget. I'll never forget when I was doing World Trade Center and we were shooting, they had replicated Ground Zero in uh, Marina Del Rey. And I was like riding on a golf cart to Ground Zero and there was like palm trees in the background and something about it just felt completely wrong. And, and but in this instance, um, I really kind of forgot. I thought we were somewhere else. Yeah. You know. It's amazing what a great production design does in terms of, um, tricking the outside that then tricks the inside, you know? And you're more with everybody else's vision of the dream, you know? Mm -hmm. Which is fun. I love going, I love going into dreams that are, I love that feeling. Uh, I used to get this in Toronto all the time, you know, come out of a movie like Enter the Dragon, you know what I mean? And then you go back onto the street and you go, oh my God, I'm back in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> Apocalypse Now, Lawrence of Arabia, all of these films that are such complete immaculate universes that you need to almost go to, is it Wiesbaden in Germany to decompress from <laughs> one world before you get into the real world, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this movie does that. Yeah. And the last question is, there are many important themes in the film. Which one do you feel is the most powerful and will stick with the audiences once the film is over? Well, I mean, as you were saying, Mike, earlier, is a, a film about loyalty, really. Yeah. And what an incredibly valuable virtue uh, loyalty is. And... Um, how important it is to uh, to hold on to it. Yeah, loyalty is the is the string theory that keeps everything together. That that you can trust people. Trust is the basis of all relationships. Um, trust and respect. And uh, I think if you were to look at the uh, base molecules of this movie, it uh, it's about trust and respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, the great thing about a democracy is that um, democracy, when it works, is a trust and respect machine. Um, and uh, while there's a lot of inefficiencies with democracy, that does never, it always remembers to uh, protect trust and respect. And um, that's why, even though there's a lot wrong with democracy, there's everything right with democracy. 